Computers keep changing the world, but their power and safety is limited by their rigid design. The T2 Tile project works for bigger and safer computing using Living Systems principles. Follow our progress here on T Tuesday Updates. This is the 28th T Tuesday update. Let's get into it. Last week we finally got the parts delivered to ETS, the uh, manufacturer, the circuit board uh, manufacturing company in Albuquerque that's going to be assembling the boards for us, but getting all the solder on parts onto the circuit boards. Uh, um, since then, uh, I, I did some reviewing for this upcoming artificial life conference that I submitted a paper to a few weeks ago that we haven't really talked about yet. Uh, in addition, this week, uh, the tiles themselves, the T2 tiles that we're going to have 150, 100, I don't know, somewhere between, somewhere less than 200, because that's the number of boards we have, but it might be close to 200. We'll see how it goes. Uh, but the tiles themselves are not enough. We also need the ITCs, the intertile connectors. Uh, so I've been trying to find ways to get those manufactured, got an update on that. Uh, uh, and coming up in the coming week, the manufacturing, it seems like it's likely to start. Uh, uh, so that's very exciting. So let's, a uh, bunch of stuff I want to uh, go through quickly. Uh, so yes, so the, uh, you know, I spent 24 years as a professor, but I hate grading. Uh, uh, well, in particular, I hate giving people bad grades because, uh, you know, nobody likes it. It's not fun. I don't like it. Uh, um, so, I, you know, I, I sort of feel sort of offended when I have to give bad grades, but, you know, I, I do what I do. So I make up, I, I make up, you know, rules for myself to say that, you know, well, you know, you need this, 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 this. You, you make a rubric that says, you know, where it's going to go. Uh, um, and then you sort of take it out of your own hands and say, well, sorry, you know, the rubric says whatever. So I make up these things when I'm reviewing as well and sort of check all the stuff off. And so I did all these papers. I kind of like one of them, uh, the other ones, not so much. So I've been dragging my feet. The deadline is tomorrow, so I'll put in the notes and that'll be done. Uh, um, in addition, there's this, I don't know exactly what to call it, a startup conference, a trade show or something that I agreed to go talk to in Vienna in less than a month now, uh, um, that, you know, they've got me on the schedule. So, you know, right. So, uh, which of these doesn't belong here? Uh, uh, but, you know, there it is at, at uh, uh, the f afternoon, first afternoon of the conference. I come right after a, a talk on pioneering cultured meat and they have me down for talking about artificial life more recently they filed up with an email and said what title do i want but maybe i'll just leave it as artificial life i'm not really sure uh in addition there's the next day uh, a future of ai thing which was originally structured uh, to be as a debate of some sort but i'm not sure how that's actually going to come out so we shall see but at the very least i've started to be thinking about what's my talk going to be it's only 20 minutes um I'm thinking of staying in the framework of artificial life, start with the meaning of life, uh, like the A-Life uh, video that I assume most folks have seen here, uh, here. Uh, but then end with the T2 uh, tile as an architecture for uh, computing for the future that's going to use artificial life as its fundamental model and, and do that in 20 minutes with time for questions it could have. <laughs> Uh, uh, so we shall see. Uh, but that's starting to develop as well. Um, all right. So the manufacturing, the, uh, getting the tiles done. So last week we packaged up all the, uh, parts that we've been buying, stuck it in the trunk, drove it over to ETS, dumped it all off on them, took a look at the machine that was going to be putting them together. Uh, since then, uh, I've had a bunch of, uh, email back and forth with, with Robert Evans, who's, I think, the owner of the place, as well as seems to be sort of supervising this, the, the T2, uh, manufacturing for me, which is great. Um, and he, and so, you know, the data that I sent him was not in the format that he wanted, which it doesn't actually surprise me. So the, the KiCad, uh, puts out this, for all the surface mount parts, you need to know exactly where they are down to the fraction of a millimeter and how they're oriented. So the pick and place machine, once it picks it up off of the tape and spins it around to the correct orientation, knows where to put it down. So this dot pause file that KiCad produces that has this information, position X, position Y, rotation, and so forth, uh, but it's printed out, you know, all padded with spaces. It's, it's not a machine readable form. So, uh, he was looking for a CSV file. So I made a little Perl script. Uh, uh, 
<laughs> uh, uh, makes me happy to be able to make a little Perl script and just actually get something done without a lot of design fussing. Uh, um, and reduce the file down to this, so the designator, the C1s. The important, particularly important ones are these FIDs that stand for Uh They're just actual little target markers. There's three of them so that you get, uh, you know, collinear ones and then an orthogonal one so that the pick and place machine, which uses cameras, can actually look at the board, find the fiducials, and know where it is relative to all the other things. So the position of the fiducials in the, in the pause file, or in this case, a CSV file, uh, uh, sort of defines a, the or, or, or the coordinate system for all of the other stuff. Uh, um, so I sent it off to him. Uh, you know, he was also asking about why the numbers were all like you know minus a hundred and so forth. And I don't know. Uh, that's just what KiCad produced for me. I, I did some googling about it, and it seemed like you know, man, I do not want to mess with this. You know, I could just take the CSV file and just do spreadsheet stuff to it, like move move everything around to any given offset. But I didn't did not dare want to go back to the KiCad thing and try to regenerate the pause file with some different origin. Uh, so we went back a couple of times and Robert you know bless him said you know <laughs> I can figure it out that's that's what I was hoping he would say uh, uh, so we'll see uh, um, so that was uh, early last week so then yesterday Monday uh, uh, I just sent him a note saying is there anything else I can do about you know the his task is to get this uh, the stencil made, the official heavy duty stencil, and also figure out the pick and place stuff from the pause file thing, and then actually, you know, say when is it going to happen. So I got a mail back from him yesterday as well. I was out of town for a couple days. The stencil is here, and I'll be programming the pick and place tomorrow. Probably run them Wednesday. That's tomorrow from now. Uh, um, if you want to come video, yeah, I want to come video. So. <sighs> If all goes well, or if, you know, barring, I guess at this point we're sort of past all going well and we're at the point of, you know, bar, unless there's a, a surprising bad thing, tiles may start to exist, or at least the surface mount parts may get mounted on the circuit boards. Not the, that's not the whole story this week. So that's very exciting. All right, that's the uh, manufacturing the boards front. Uh, the, the, the 3D printing, the cases, uh, each of these cases that I've been accumulating has 36, uh, uh, each of these boxes has 36 cases in it. So if we have five boxes, that's 180 cases. We have one, two, three, four. We have five. This fifth box up here is not quite full. We really need just a few more goes on the, uh, uh, through four ups on the 3D printer and the cases will be ready to go. We can start moving on to the ITC handles. So, um, progress there as well. That's been a long road. Uh, uh, okay. Um, right. And then it's the intertile connectors. Um, this is, uh, the PD, the power and data connector. We also have the POs, the power onlys, and then a few very special ones, one per Lotus, uh, the power injector, uh, ones that we use to feed power into them. We haven't talked about them really. Uh, but it's the idea that it's, it's, a. a 16 pins going to 16 pins that are just directly mapped uh, straight over uh, with these 2 by 8 with this polarizing rib down one side to make it so that it only goes in the orientation that it wants to go. Uh, uh, here's another picture at it from another angle. And now this particular little header piece, the thing with the 2 by 8 the female header and the, and the polarizing rib, is not that easy to get. Uh, I've eventually found three different sources of it. There was the why pay less Sullins connector, which is, you know, lovely. And you go to the website and it's all in English, which helps me. Uh, um, but, you know, very expensive, uh, whatever it is, you know, 60 cents each if you're 57 cents each if you're getting a thousand of them uh, then there was the much cheaper like 16 cents each uh from for yukon that was a whole production that you remember uh, if you've been here for a while uh that had a minimum order quantity of a thousand and a very long lead time and then i found this third one at this yx con company uh, that, uh, and then of course I didn't really appreciate being a, you know, white American, well, somewhat white, uh, um, 
so that you know for you con and uh yx con they look the same to me but you know one of them is in taiwan and one of them is in the people's republic of china so they don't think each other is all that similar uh pcb way and c studios are both in the people's republic so a company that was in the people's republic which is why x con seemed like it would be more likely to work uh, uh but unlike the uh, For You Con, uh, lovely, lovely data sheet that had no decisions on it except how many pins did you want, everything else was all set, the uh, the uh, XY Con one had this sort of fill in the blank in order to figure out what the part number is with all this different information, which terrifies me, of course, because most of the, uh, you know, you presume all the really important stuff is, is in Chinese and the stuff that's in English is, you know, as right as it happens to be. Uh, um, um, so I've been talking, I had sent uh, a order off to seed studios to say, can you make the circuit board and get the parts and assemble it? Uh, um, I had first given them the uh, the Solens connector, the SFH11, blah, 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 uh, um, and they had specified it, and it was incredibly expensive. It was more than the $0.64 cents each. Uh, it was $0.68 cents each, and um, so that wasn't great. Uh, uh, so net result was going to be not quite, you know, $1,400 and plus uh, and a month uh, of working time. And so I wanted to see if I could do better than that. So I looked at that at a YXCon data sheet and I made up a part number. <laughs> Uh, uh, and that's where we were uh, uh, last week. Uh, they had accepted it. They hadn't quoted on it because they said it was pending. A couple of days later, after last week's update, indeed, they actually came through and they said uh, that it's confirmed the part cost would be 183 bucks, which was a lot, lot less than the the, the Sullins uh, connector. And in fact, uh, you divide this out, it's it's 20 cents each, which is not bad. I mean, the best we ever saw was the 16 cents from 4Yukon, but couldn't really buy it. And everywhere else, it was 60 cents and up. Uh, um, and so the total price for 450 from Seed Studios, $654 uh, and change if that part number is right and that's the problem i don't really have a lot of confidence that if i pick the wrong part number that seed studios is going to push back and say oh by the way this is not going to fit i'm just going to go ahead and order them and then we'll find out that it doesn't fit and it'll be on me <sighs> the problem is you know so let, let's take a look at this so the this is the xy con it's a f185-12 and then you pick number of pins per row okay well so i need 16 pins total arranged in two rows of eight so you'd think you'd put 08 there uh, uh then it's contact plating full of gold semi-gold <sighs> What do I want? I put a zero, which is the teeniest that it's point zero point eight micro inches of gold. Anything less than than in some small number of micro inches, they call gold flash. And there's people that say that you know it doesn't really do any good. The whole point of having gold connectors is that it makes you know very low friction uh, and very high con conductivity, so you don't get corrosion problems. You have very solid, low resistance connections and so forth. In particular, you can uh, um, uh, unmate them. And and mate them again and and when you have this gold flash this flash gold very thin stuff apparently it gets worn off fairly quickly i'm not going to sweat that uh i i use the no gold at all connectors and i very rarely had any actual trouble so even flash gold i feel pretty good about and when i was looking for other parts to google just to compare what do you have any f185 12 blah 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 a0 the the this all gold in the thinnest possible plating was the most popular thing uh, um and then you know what kind of insulator material i don't even know what kind of insulator material i want i, I mean i do know a little bit uh but again i just picked the one that seemed most popular out there s y y s y it's like simon says uh what packing do you want a polyethylene bag blah 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 i put a y because googling other things seem that most popular and then three now it turns out the three is totally important because the three is the one that says you got actually need the polarizing rib you can get the exact same part f185 12 blah, 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 one and it doesn't have these plugged ends or it doesn't have the polarizing rib or both or whatever uh so this is why i'm so terrified that i, I guessed wrong on this in particular uh, i did not go with f185 1208 
I said F1 and E5 12, 16. Why did I do that? Because it seemed to me, Googling around, that in most part numbers that from YXCon, even though it says number of pins per row, it's actually the number of pins on the entire connector. And they go different ways, different companies. For example, the Sullins connector, this D08 inside the part number there, the D stands for dual or double, it means two row, and the 08 does in fact mean pins per row. So it's a 16 pin connector in two rows of eight. Uh, other folks, they do the number of pins on the entire thing. There's no consistent markings. Uh, um, Oh, yeah. And then another wonderful thing, of course. So the four Yukon guys, who I certainly wish I could do it, uh, could work with them. Uh, when they start numbering the pins, see the all of these connectors, the ones that are meant with the polarizing rib, they have four pit, the, the two end rows are not real pins. They're just plug plastic that allows you to line it up and it allows the header that goes, the shrouded header that goes around the male pins to be sort of uniform all the way around. Uh, and so, like a very reasonable thing, uh, the four Yukon uh, data sheet does not count the plugged holes, one, two, three, four, when it starts labeling what the holes are. Uh, but the XYCon claims it does. One, two, three, four, even though one and two are plugged. So uh, when now, uh, what are we even talking about is a row? Is a row with four open pins plus two plugged? Is that supposed to be a six? <sighs> uh, um, you know, it's my fault for not reading Chinese. Uh, um, so I, you know, I googled all kinds of related part numbers and tried to figure it out. And really, it seems like you know X Y Con F twenty five twelve eighteen. That's very close to what I was going for. Twelve sixteen is what I went for. A zero, the thinnest gold flash. Uh, the B whatever that was, the type of plastic. The A coming a polyethylene bag type one. I don't even know what it is, but it's not the one that I want. Uh, um, and the twelve eighteen is listed as a two times nine position and all these other ones that are in two 1236 is two times 18 positions so i went with 16 but i was really hoping that i'd get some pushback from seed or i went on to pcb way as well uh as i talked about last week and for them since i had a customer service person who was dedicated to me uh, that i had interacted with before i said well how about trying to do the pds and the do's at the same time since uh, you could click on uh put two designs on one board you could click on tell pcb way to make the uh, the panel that contains both of these designs so i tried it it did not go well. Uh, uh, my person said, you know, thanks for assembly inquire. Please make, I didn't exactly, it, it, we had several go rounds. Uh, uh, how do I, the pro, my problem was I wanted to send them two sets of Gerber files, one for design A, one for design B, and have them put them together. Uh, the long and short of it is with a lot of uh, confusion and this kind of undercut my feeling that it was very nice to have, you know, a personal person that I could actually interact with because it took a long time to get to the bottom line. Uh, eventually, you know, it couldn't be, please make the two orders separately, but then how do the, they get panelized together and so forth. I finally made a picture saying, you know, here's your interface. I click panel by PCB way. I, I type two into the number of designs. That's all accepted. How do we get that to happen? Uh, uh, and the answer is, well, no, we can only, we only can panel one same PCB. All right. So that was not the greatest interaction. On the other hand, I was asking more of PCB Way than I had asked of Seed Studios, so I went back and I did just the same thing. I said, you know, let's just do the PDs, see what they, their quote is. So I took their bomb format and I put the four Yukon part number on there because that would be the one that I was most comment, most confident of what it was. Uh, but I did list the XY Con and the the Sullins, uh, specifically saying, you know, the Sullins is not preferred; it's too expensive. Uh, uh, they accepted it. They they gave me a quote. The two hundred eighty seven dollars did not include the the part cost. That was just the assembly cost. And then quickly enough, they they gave me a price for making the circuit boards. And they were reviewing for doing the uh, the uh, assembly parts. And eventually, it came through uh, for eight hundred dollars in component cost, uh, eleven hundred dollars total. It turned out it was because they in fact were quoting the DigiKey part as well. Um, 
so it was three hundred dollars less than Seed Studios, so that was competitive, but it still wasn't really what I wanted to do. So I got back with them saying, you know, it, it could be possible to do the X Y con part? Could that be sourced, or is there a reason? What I would really love them to say is it, that's the wrong part. It's 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 upside down. It has sixteen pieces. It has thirty two something. They'll check again. That's where that stands now. We'll see what happens. <sighs> uh, the next update will be in a week. I think we're going to have manufactured tiles in progress, if not in hand. Hope to see you next week.